A sljedeću prezentaciju pripremio je Nuno Kunja, generalni menadžer za menadžment i osoblje Vetropak Holdinga. So, good afternoon everyone. Uh, it's really, really a pleasure to be here uh, in Croatia, in Split, beautiful town. First, I would like to thank the invitation from uh, my fantastic colleague Tihomir Premožak. Really, really thank you. And I would like to congratulate also the organization for the great uh, organization for this conference, uh, Daniela, the support uh, through the, um, the preparation phase was really fantastic. Thank you so much. And uh, the speakers that we had until now, I think they gave me a very good gateway for what I'm going to talk now. I am HR and I, I, I until now I haven't met anyone who is HR. Is there any other HR people here? Oh, we're not alone. <laughs> great, great, great. So, um, Actually, what I want to talk now is to try to build a little bit of a bridge towards the topic of, in all this scenario of sustainability, in all this scenario of what's happening in the world, what kind of leaders do we need to attract the right people to face the challenges that we've been discussing about? Simple as that. We talk about leadership. What does that mean, leadership? Um, I am from Vetropak. So first I'll tell you a little bit about Vetropak. I guess most of you for what I saw around know Vetropak. I am based in Switzerland. Personally, I'm Portuguese. So I have to say I prefer this weather than the weather of Zurich. But um, I am based in Zurich. Uh, Vetropak is a, is a company that was with us for 110 years. Uh, it's, it's a long story, a family-based organization. Uh, we are now present in uh, eight countries. Uh, we are leader in seven of those eight countries. We are based in Europe only because that's the family decision. We want to be in Europe. We want to be in glass. We believe glass is really a sustainable product and this is really very aligned with the topic today. We want to be a great place to work and we have been since last year certified as a great place to work in Switzerland and our goal is to be certified everywhere. So it's a company that I joined three years ago and I'm very proud to be part of this path because what we're doing right now is exactly reshaping the way we see leadership to adapt to the needs that have been discussed today. So I hope I can give you a little bit of a, a feeling of how I look into these topics. I'm not claiming I know, I, I just want to share with you what I think about it and, uh, and how I see the need to have great leaders. So f first, uh, I would like this to work. Okay, uh, first I would like to talk about what's happening. It's actually quite big. We have five mega trends happening in the world. And I think we covered a few of them, but it's even more in my opinion, rapid urbanization. Rapid urbanization, uh, basically, we have more and more people staying in the big cities. Is COVID affecting that? Of course it is. Now people realized I don't have to live. I can even work remotely. So more and more I want to take advantages of being in Zagreb versus being in, in, a, in a village out there. The younger guys, they prefer that, right? At least that's what we're seeing. 70% of the world's population by 2050 will be in the main cities. How can we attract these guys to where we are, <laughs> right? Um, climate change. We, t we spoke about what one degree can make to the, uh, to the world. Uh, I mean, this is terrible. You, you, you see this here, the prices of, of energy that, that are climbing like they need never climbed before. Economic shift. So this is actually quite, quite interesting in my opinion because not only the power, uh, the actually the title should be economic and power shift. Not only the power of the US is fading away, but the type of power is shifting as well. It's no longer the same kind of things that made uh, uh, countries and, uh, and economies powerful. Today, data, is the new gold, as you probably heard. So things are changing dramatically. What made, what <laughs> you remember the book, what got you here won't get you there. That's exactly where we are. Things are changing in a way that we need to understand. It's no longer just about money. 
it's about climate, it's about sustainability, it's about all these topics that matter. You can get your company ruined if you're discriminating, if your supply chain is not according to the, uh, to the social uh, requirements uh, on, on any level. Could be equalization, could be discrimination, could be gender equality, anything. You can be the most profitable organization and then suddenly, puff, you're dead. Uh, demogra dem demographic change. We have uh, the so-called baby boomers coming now to retirement. Just in Croatia this year, we have almost 50 people retiring just this year in Vetropak alone. And with that, we have new generations coming in. But guess what? The baby boomers are probably the last analog generation we have. So the, ba the new generations coming in are digital generations. Those who believe anything is possible. Right? So it's, it's really affecting how you lead these people. It's totally different. And I think it matters. Gender. More and more, I actually took a note, and maybe I should start reading my notes to make sure I cover everything I have <laughs> prepared. But, but honestly, you, you think about fi uh, many years ago, or uh, not, sorry, not many years ago, you could not list so many women in power like you do today. I have Angela Merkel, Christine Lagarde, Kamala Harris, Ursula von der Leyen, Melinda Gates, Nancy Pelosi, and I could go on. Number of women in power, my wife, for example, that, that are more and more uh, appearing as influence uh, into the world. Even in this Congress, I see more women today than I would have seen two years ago, which is fantastic. In our company, we now have uh, the first, for the first time since this Monday, the first lady as a key leader in our operations areas. Until now, it was only women in HR, communications, legal. Now we have in operations as well. Quite, quite, quite demanding. But it's not. I. This is a part I don't agree. Uh, diversity is not about gender alone. We need to think that the fact that I'm here and we have a guy in UK talking to us, we can have a guy in Asia talking to us. It's about diversity of thinking, it's about diversity in religions, it's about diversity in color. Everything is changing and we are interacting with them every day. How can I as a leader cope with that? Right? I, I still remember when I was starting my career in the coffee place that we would make jokes, jokes that very certainly today would not be acceptable in the workplace. Things are changing dramatically. Uh, migration is another topic for demography. We are losing a lot of people simply because they decide to go to another country looking for a better life. Something that some years ago was not so easy. Today people are not afraid. I, I, I'm not afraid. Just put me a GPS and I go wherever you want. I didn't have GPS in the past. I have Google Translator, I can do it. I have automatic translator, I can do it. It's not so scary anymore to migrate. And, and as a leader, the question I keep having is, how, how do I retain my people, right? Yeah, Croatia is sitting just net do next door to countries like Austria, who pay probably 50% uh, more in salaries. How can I retain my people? This is really a tough challenge for all of us. And then finally, technological breakthrough. Digitalization, automation, it's happening. And it allows us also to work in a different way, right? So, so basically, I think before I talk about leadership changes, I, I really need to go through this, and I hope you agree with me, that uh, it, is, it is really um, different from what it was. And on technological breakthrough, what's happening is that countries like India and China, that not many years ago were called the BRICS, I don't know if you remember, the BRICS, they don't exist anymore. Right? Brazil, uh, what was the BRICS? Brazil, Russia, India, China, right? That doesn't exist. Now we call them emerging economies. You don't call underdevelopment or, or uh, third world countries. It's emerging in colonies. India will overcome 
uh, uh, U.S. is a second economy very soon. They are no longer third world. Still today in Europe, I continue to see some uh, resistance when it comes to Indian candidates. Oh, it's a different culture. Let's not tie it. They are one of the most powerful countries in the world right now. Right? Um, so sub-Saharan, 12% have an internet account, a banking account. Well, in the world, 2% is the average. It's, it's really amazing, isn't it? I, I actually believe these numbers are, are crazy. And then, you come to this, and I hope this works. It's the a very, very quick video. It altered my life in a way where it made me remember that like, it's my life at the end of the day, and I get to make the decisions about it. I knew that my job at a restaurant and those days were, they were over, that I wanted to go to a place that had well-being in mind. I finally had time to like sit with myself and reflect on my life. Having that moment of reflection just reminded me of my goals and what I want for myself and my family. I feel like the bar has really gone down for what people are willing to tolerate after having all this time to reflect. I like and it needs to stay the same as remote working. People get to enjoy life more, but still get to enjoy the city more, and they're not burnt out. Even if it's as simple as you get more personal days, employees are people too, with families and responsibilities and things that they do outside of work. I think the thing that we really need for jobs to understand is humanity. Like, we want to do our jobs, but we just need some flexibility. That's all we need. Have you heard about the Great Resignation? If you go to Wikipedia, the term is already there. The Great Resignation is really happening. Of course, this data is much more American, but, but it is happening. And if you think about it, it's happening everywhere. People are now thinking, why should I spend five hours in traffic per day? Why should I actually waste my time like that when I can work from home. Ho COVID has accelerated all of this. In the past they thought, oh, maybe it's not possible. Now they know it is possible. They are leaving for these reasons. And actually, if you think about it, burnout in most ways is a, is a, is a consequence of, these, of this these three in here, which are all tied with the same percentage, flexibility, discrimination, and not being valued in the company. You work, you work, you work, you're not recognized, you don't get feedback from your leaders, you don't get good appraisals, you don't get even good targets, you don't know if what you're doing is, is uh, aligned with the strategy or not. You don't understand how you contribute to sustainability. Wha what attracts the talent? Actually, compensation that everybody talks about is just number two. The first one is really remote work ri right now. The third is management. And actually, if you want my opinion, everything is management. So actually, that's my point. My point is that if you're not aware of what about what's happening, how can you be a good leader? You need to understand this. And then as a consequence, I wanted to talk about leadership megatent trends. So what's happening in the leadership world? What's needed by the leaders to be successful? And I, in order to compare with the five megatrends, I chose five leadership megatrends. And the first one is leading through change. Not the first one, the first one I'm going to talk about. It's leading through change. It's very, very important. The word agility is everywhere right now. It's very, very important to understand that you need to adapt. You need to know where we're going, why we're going there, but how you get there, let's reassess on a regular basis. And people don't do well with that. People like to know exactly what we're going to do. And that's why change is tough. And that's why leading is tough, because don't tell people why? Because the why for you can be very different for them. Just make them understand what is the vision, where you want to go, and share your 
leadership in how you define the way to get there. Share, we, we, we keep hearing I heard this morning three or four times, brave leaders. That's what brave means, is letting go. We are no longer in control. Our role as leaders is simply to align where we want to go, inspire, let them do the job. Steve Jobs said, we're hiring smart people not to tell them what to do. We're hiring smart people for them to tell us what to do. And as long as we know where we want to go and they share that will, I believe it's much better to let them do it because they will find much better ways than we do. Managing burnouts, another one. Really, 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 empathy is a key element of being a true leader. If people are tired, let them rest. I, if people are needed to work more, make sure that they have the reserves to work more. I was talking with the CEO of a company in uh, Germany the other day, asking me, no, no, but do you really believe in burnout? I think this is just uh, a voodoo from 21st century. It's not really true. People are just weak and, and they call it burnout. Honestly, I believe many of us still think like that. And, 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 and to be honest with you, even I, I, I sometimes I think, how can someone have a burnout? Uh, how can you actually not resist? But the truth is, if you think about the society today, we are millions. Everybody's talking about social solitude. I don't know if you heard about that expression that we are, in the past I knew all my neighbors, now I don't know a single one. You know about that? That you're living in a society where closeness does not mean knowledge of the, of the next person. And this makes you alone. And you go to a company and when you treat it again as a number, you're even more alone. And when you work your best and then you're not recognized for what you did, you feel even more alone. And these burnouts are now a part of our life. So feedback is extremely important, positive or negative. Because by giving people feedback on, yes, you're doing well, is probably even more important than the feedback, which we always think feedback is about correction. No, feedback is about alignment. So this is very important. People need to understand that their effort is valued. Very, very important. Gra craving connections. You as leaders need to embrace that connectivity today is digital. And, and, uh, and, and having people doing LinkedIn at work is not necessarily not work. Actually, if you think about it, uh, I don't know if you heard in, in uh, training, we always talk about the 70, 20, 10. Have you heard about that? 70 is on the job. So we learn a lot if we do training on the job. The 20 is mostly with um, coaching, people mentoring you or coaching you. That's how you learn. And then the 10% is really classroom training. Now there is a new thing coming up, which is what you learn in your life. Why? Because more and more what you learn in your life helps you at work. And that is also important. It's important to allow people to interact with others because in LinkedIn you know what other companies in are doing. In here we know what other people are doing and we bring it back to work and we use it. That is an extremely important element of training that we need to embrace and accept as leaders. So, so craving connections include so understanding how the bloody Zoom work because my charisma is now different. I, and I, I find this part really interesting. In the past, I, I, I worked a lot in recruitment, as you can imagine. People would decide to hire someone just based on the handshake. I'm sure many of you heard about that. That was a firm one. Not too long, not too short, not too weak, not too strong. That's the guy I want to hire. Now do a handshake view video and decide if that's the guy who handshakes well. We, we need to change our bias towards people. I'm hiring, I, last year, first time, I hired the guy without ever meeting that guy for my team. 
for the company. We hired the senior leader without ever meeting that guy, senior leader. And by the end, I was even talking with uh, Tiramir, by the end, uh, the CEO came to us and said, actually, I imagine him taller, I don't know why. <laughs> and, and this is funny. I, I actually believe this is the sign of times. We are hiring people and we don't know them physically. We just know how they think. So the charisma now comes from a different place. Your face becomes much more important than your body. So we need to be much more emotional the way we communicate because that's the only thing people are seeing. Right? You are on video. You don't have the benefit of sitting at the top of the table and they know, ah, he's the boss. You're on video. You, you don't even know where your square is appearing. How do you impose yourself and your charisma? You need to learn different ways to be charismatic and that's craving connections. I, I remember the first time I chatted on, uh, I, I'm not so new and so young anymore. The first time I chatted, I remember seeing the young guys, for them it was so natural to write something. And it, oh, there. And for me it was, what do I write? Why, what am I going to write? What Facebook, what do I post? I, I don't know. And for the, other, for the young kids, they, they just, it was natural. Today is still the same. And we need to learn. You can only learn by doing. So we as leaders, imagine your charisma. Being in a meeting where everybody's ready and you're kind of, oh, I don't know my mic. I don't know how it works. Is my screen okay? And the screen is pointing to the back. That is damaging your charisma, believe it or not. Who wants to report to a guy who doesn't know how the screen works? Right. So this is really important. Advanced digital work. Also, learn digitally. Use that. Don't just ask the others to do it. It's fast. We were, actually we, we were together in the US visiting uh, a, a lab that is one of the key researchers for cancer. And they were saying many of the treatments that are out there, the doctors themselves, they don't know. It's so fast that they don't know anymore it's out there. Don't trust the first one. Always have a second and a third opinion. They don't know. It's not their fault. It's just so fast. And then retaining top plan. I, want like, I would like to challenge you on this. It's not about retaining. <sighs> actually, this is my opinion. I don't read it anywhere. It's just my opinion. I, I actually don't believe you can retain young talent. They want to change. The cycle has proven that young people, they want two years here, the, in the past, everybody said, oh, you found a job for a life, how, how lucky you. It's no longer like that. They, they want to try new things. Three years tops, they're gone. Don't think about retention. Think about attraction. Let them go, but make it such a nice place, they want to come back. And who is doing this? It's not your boss, it's you. For your employees, you are the face of the company. If you go to a shop and you buy a coat, are not well served, you will never go back to that shop. No, no, doesn't matter which brand it is. It's because of that person that you faced. The leader is that person. You come back because of that person. And that's why it's so important to train your leaders. And the, this is the end of my presentation because then what is Vetropak doing about this? We redefined in 2019 the whole strategy uh, we want to be clearly sustainable, so definitely that point is extremely important for us. We understand that being sustainable, walking the talk is very important, also for the employees, because the employees today also want to work for a company that is doing the right thing. But more than that, we invested uh, again on values, and on the values, this is actually a little bit difficult because people expect transparency, Honesty. Uh, we actually went through a different way. We actually put safety, um, environment responsibility, change as a value. Because for us, it's also how, how the leaders work. If you are, as a leader, change, you, you are not going to be successful as a leader. So the values need to transcribe that as well. We created a new model. 
And from this model, I, I wanted simplicity that everybody understands. So basically, it's you lead yourself. You as a, a leader, you're still professional. You need to give the example. You lead others, so you need to develop them. You need to make tough decisions, be clear on targets, hire well, do performance reviews, etc. But at the end of the day, you're leading the company. You are an ambassador of the company. You are the face of the company. If you're not representing the company, you will not be successful as a leader. And then we implemented Vetro Academy. Vetro Academy is an academy, which, by the way, I'm very proud this year it was awarded uh, a prize as uh, one of the best uh, development initiatives. Uh, we got this prize in Lisbon, but it was an European uh, place. This academy is a place where we're training non-optional, all leaders, top-down. Started with us, goes through all the organization. 400 leaders in the organization go through this program in two years. And it's not just leadership, it's any training program that helps you as a leader be successful. We talk about sustainability, we talk about change, we talk about leadership, of course, but we talk about other things that we believe are relevant for you as a leader in this academy. And that's the first pillar, we, we want to have other pillars. Of, but today it's more about leadership. So as a leader, think about that. Think about training yourself. Think about embracing diversity. Think about communication, the constant feedback that you need to give your people. Think about the communities, the environment. That's what people are looking for. If you want to attract talent, those are the things you need. And I believe if you follow this, you can actually make your company successful and you can be a great leader. Don't forget trust and honesty and authenticity. Very, very important. You cannot just say it because you believe they want to hear it. You need yourself to believe in it. Authenticity is really, really, really important. Be yourself, they will know. One last point. Many people, many people uh, use these uh, pictures to hide the background. Professionally, it's actually helpful. If you're talking with a customer, actually, I would say it's very, very helpful. If you're talking with your teams, I don't believe it is, because the teams like to see you as a person and showing your house, you also have a family and you also have a home is really, really important. So with that, I'm finished and, um, and I'm kicked also. So uh, thank you for the attention and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much, Mr. Cunha. How did you say? Face is more important than the body. There is a chance for me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.